In this video, I'm going to try to explain some statistical confusion about whether the flu shot actually works or not. And I should say that I'm not a medical doctor, and so you should not take anything from this presentation as personal advice relevant to whether you should get the flu shot or not. I'm really interested in clearing up some statistical issues that I've come across by trying to answer this question myself. Does the flu shot work? Now, as I mentioned, the background to this issue is that when I looked at it online, there seemed to be very contradictory evidence about whether the flu shot was effective or not. And so some researchers argue in favor of its effectiveness, and they state that getting the flu shot, and this is for healthy adults, by the way, getting the flu shot reduces the chances of infection by 50%, which might be argued to be quite a substantial statistic. But there are other researchers out there who argue that the flu shot is ineffective or at least not effective enough to merit using. And what they say is that really it only reduces the chances of infection by 1%. So at least on the surface, somebody here has to be wrong if they're stating such wildly different statistics with respect to the effectiveness of the flu shot. And so I felt like I had to investigate this further more directly to see what the actual stats were. Now where these authorities were stating these statistics from were Cochrane reviews. And Cochrane reviews are independent, comprehensive reviews that I think is fair to say is a well-respected community with a lot of credibility. And what the Cochrane community does is they tend to do these very large-scale, comprehensive reviews that include most of the empirical research relevant to a research topic. And so in a fairly recent review of the topic of the flu shot effectiveness, they combine the results of the best 25 randomized placebo-controlled studies that examine the effectiveness of the flu vaccines administered to healthy adults. So these are good quality studies because they're randomized, placebo-controlled, which means that about half of the people in the study were randomly selected to receive the flu vaccine, and they didn't know that they were getting the flu vaccine. And in the other half of the sample of the study, the people received a placebo type of injection, which was really no treatment at all. Now, in some of those studies, there was no placebo. They just followed about half of the sample over the duration of three to four months, which is a flu season, to determine whether they got the flu or not. So about half of the sample received the flu injection, and the other half did not receive the flu injection. And the total sample size across all these studies was a whopping 71,221. So we're going to get a very accurate and confident estimate from this review. And here is the actual review that I'm re making reference to. It's entitled Vaccines for Preventing Influenza in Healthy Adults. And that's the URL at the bottom of the page. And it's right here. This is it here. Vaccines for Preventing influenza and healthy adults. This is where people are making reference to whether the flu vaccine is effective or not. And so the key result from this Cochrane review was that for people who received the placebo or no treatment, the average rate of flu infection was 2%. It was actually a little bit more than 2%, but people tend to cite 2% infection rate for people who don't get the flu vaccine. To be honest, I thought that was really quite low, only two out of 100 people roughly get the flu during the flu season. Now, by comparison, the people who received the flu vaccine had an average rate of infection equal to 1%. And so here's a snippet of the author's conclusion of the Cochrane Review where I got those numbers, 2 and 1%. They're roughly that in rounded terms. So solving the statistical mystery is now fairly simple and straightforward. Position 1 can be supported by doing the following statistical calculation. Divide the lower percentage by the higher percentage and then subtract that value from 1 and you get 50%. So dropping from 2% to 1% is a 50% reduction. So people arguing in favor of the effectiveness of the flu vaccine are accurate and justified on the basis of this statistic. But position 2, the people who are arguing that it's not effective enough, simply take the absolute value. By subtracting the lower percentage from the higher percentage, and in this case 2 minus 1 equals 1%. That's also totally true. And so both these camps are arguing from exactly the same data and putting forward two accurate positions, arguably, from the statistics, but give a radically different presentation of the effectiveness of the flu shot. One is spoken in relative terms, which is position 1. 
and position two is spoken in absolute terms. Now again, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not arguing in favor of one position or the other. And there are obviously other issues to take in consideration when evaluating the effectiveness of the flu shot. For example, although there's still 1% of the people who tend to contract the flu when they get the flu shot, maybe when they get the flu, it's not as bad than if they didn't have the flu injection. Conversely, people who do get the flu vaccine might be paying prices in other ways. There might be side effects, for example. And what I've noticed is that both camps don't tend to put forward those other issues to consider that might be detrimental to their position. Again, you can formulate your own position based on these data. I was in particular interested in solving this statistical mystery, which is now solved on the basis of this information. So the last thing I'm going to talk about here is a stats poll that I'm going to try to integrate into the YouTube video is to ask you what is the more appropriate way to describe these statistical results. Should health authorities be saying it's a 50% reduction in the chances of getting the flu, or should they be saying it's a 1% reduction in the chances of getting the flu? Now, of course, if you are writing a paper on this, I think the best way to do it would be to actually state both statistics and admit that both statistics carry value. But if you had to choose one way to describe it, which way would you choose? Would you choose the 50% reduction or the 1% reduction in communicating the effectiveness of the flu vaccine? So I'll put a poll and see what people tend to say with respect to that question.